Welcome to the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast. A show all about reviewing dinosaurs on a scale of 1 to 10 fossils before only the elite terrible lizards make it into the prehistoric cage match. This program is presented by the Stomp Tromp Roar Company and can be heard within all the rock layers across the planet. Grab your dinosaurs and your official scorecard because it's now time to dig for dinosaurs. Here's your Mesozoic host, Dinosaur Ranger Anthony. Attention all my junior paleontologists, ask not what your podcast can do for you, ask what you can do for your podcast. This is your Kennedy-like host, Dinosaur Ranger Anthony, and welcome back to the greatest prehistoric show on earth, the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast. Now today, we're continuing our road trip across America on a search for all kinds of prehistoric fossils souls, ancient relics, and hidden artifacts. Now for episode number 63, we're heading into the city of Dallas, Texas to visit a place called Dealey Plaza. Now this is where we'll find a building called the School Book Depository, a dinosaur holding a Zapruder camera, and a famous area called the Grassy Knoll. Now, as we know, a herbivore-type dinosaur loves eating all sorts of conifers, cycads, ferns, mosses, all kinds of vegetation. We might even find one of these plant-eating dinosaurs hidden inside the infamous grassy knoll. Now, before we begin our dinosaur review for today, let's update you guys all on some dinopreneur news, some stomp chomp roar news. Well, everybody, my Patreon Club activities calendar is all set for the month of April. So on Sunday, April 16th at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'll be doing a virtual lesson all about Jurassic Park fossilized amber and frogs. That's right, those amphibians, you guys, that helped fill the gaps of the DNA to create our dinosaurs. How did Dr. John Hammond bring back all those terrible lizards? Now on Sunday, April 23rd at 12.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'll be doing a lesson about dinosaurs in space. That's right, space exploration for our dinosaurs. Have you ever seen a Spinosaurus flying a spaceship or maybe a Brachiosaurus wearing a space helmet? You won't want to miss this one, you guys. And to participate in my interactive virtual lessons, just visit patreon.com and you can search Stomp Chomp Roar and you can become a member of my Patreon club for as low as $5 a month. Now you guys, I'm also so close to introducing my newest prehistoric pal, you guys. The newest creation of the Stomp Chomp Roar company. Paleo, my baby Spinosaurus, will soon have a new hairy friend, you guys. So make sure to follow me on Facebook by searching Stomp Chomp Roar on Facebook and then you guys, that's the best way to stay up to date on all my crazy adventures. Now you guys, let's do a few shout outs before we get started for today. Another shout out to the Takema Road Trip. I had an awesome time last Tuesday, so thank you to the Takema CDC, the Takema Herman PTO, and the Takema Herman Elementary. I had a tremendous day up there in Takema, you guys, just about an hour north of Omaha where I live, and it was just so much fun up there. Also, a special thank you to my awesome aunt and uncle who live up there in Takema, and they took me out to the Tipsy Pig for lunch between my shows, and the barbecue was great. That pork sandwich, you guys, was so good. Coleslaw, onion rings on top, it was so good. And the french fries, I can't wait to go back. Now, also, another thank you to the Happy Face Preschool. You guys truly all rock. One of my favorite preschools in all of Omaha. Now, thank you to Pender Elementary 
Elementary School for having me as part of their first annual Corky Malberg Science Day. So I had a blast up there, you guys. I went up uh, about an hour and a half north of here to Pender, Nebraska, and I was part of their Science Day. They brought a bunch of different vendors up there, including me, the dinosaur guy. I spoke to all the grades throughout the day, and it was just so much fun. Also, a special thank you to my cousin, Marin for making the day extra special. She's the first grade teacher up there at Pender Elementary School. Now, a happy three Rex birthday party to Finley, you guys. We dug for some dinosaur eggs, or were they actually Easter eggs? Well, nonetheless, it was still a perfect morning. Now, thank you to Fairy Godmother Erin for meeting me over Zoom yesterday, you guys. I met Erin, you guys. She owns a Fairy Tale Omaha, and she brings princesses and superheroes to all the kids of Omaha. So sort of like how I do dinosaurs and all kinds of paleontology and fossils, Godmother Erin brings princesses and superheroes to Omaha. We met over Zoom, we talked about our businesses, all of our experiences over the years, and where we see ourselves going into the future, you guys. So Erin, it was so great meeting you uh, yesterday. I had tons of fun. Now sometimes dreams do come true, because how cool would it be to have a real stomp chomp roar location someday? And a wise man once said, every accomplishment starts with a decision to try. Well, you guys, let's grab our official Dinosaur Review for Kids scorecards and our U.S. history books, because it's time for our next Dinosaur Review. Let us never review out of fear, but let us never fear to review. It's time for greatness. Let's do this! Here we go, all my junior paleontologists. I have my official scorecard pulled up, and today we're talking about a dinosaur genus called the Pentaceratops. The Pentaceratops. And the name of this dinosaur means the five-horned face. The five-horned face. The Pentaceratops. Now, what type of dinosaur was this? What was its dinosaur order? Well, the Pentaceratops is an Ornothician-type dinosaur. Those are the bird-hipped dinosaurs. And then it falls into that Marginocephalia suborder. So those are the herbivores before it falls into the Ceratopsians family. It's a Ceratopsian, like our Triceratops, our Styracosaurus, our Pachyrhinoceros, our Cynoceratops. All those different Ceratopsians is the family our Pentaceratops falls into. Those are the horned and frilled dinosaurs, you guys. Super neat are Pentaceratops. Now, how big was this Ceratopsian? What was its length, its height, its weight? What was it compared to like our Triceratops? Well, you guys, our Pentaceratops is up to 23 feet long from its nose all the way back to its long tail. 23 feet long or 7 meters. Then it can be possibly up to 15 feet high or 4.5 meters and then it's probably weighing in somewhere around 8,000 to maybe 11, 12,000 pounds. Now, when I was researching the Pentaceratops, it was very difficult to get a, a, an accurate, an exact number of how big it was because they found a dinosaur, a Pentaceratops at one time, that they believed was 30 feet long, the same as our Triceratops. But scientists actually renamed that fossil a Titanoceratops. So the biggest pentaceratops at one time actually got taken away from that genus and became its own dinosaur genus, the titanoceratops. And that made the pentaceratops go a little bit smaller than they thought it once was because like I said, that main huge fossil got named a different genus away from the pentaceratops family. So you guys, again, our pentaceratops only around probably 23 feet in length, maybe 50 15 feet high, and that's including its huge frill that we'll talk about here in just a minute, and it's weighing probably somewhere around 10,000 pounds. Now, how fast was our Pentaceratops? How fast was it galloping, or trotting, or running all throughout the grassland back during the Mesozoic era? Well, this one we can look at a friend, our Triceratops. Triceratops, we know, is probably going around 15 to 20 miles per hour, so we can believe our Pentaceratops is 
is probably somewhere right along those same uh, those same speeds. So 15, 20 miles per hour for our pentaceratops. Now you guys, they have those quadrupedal stance. They're walking on those four column-like legs, those hooves down there, a few claws down there on some of their toes that are at the bottom of their feet. Now you guys, let's go over the characteristics, the weapons, the defense of this dinosaur. What did our pentaceratops look like? Well, our pentaceratops has one of the biggest skulls of almost all the ceratopsians. They have a, a huge, a ginormous head. Their frill, you guys, is enormous. It is just completely huge. And our pentaceratops, about an eight foot, I even seen on one website, a nine foot skull. A nine foot skull for our pentaceratops. Now, our name, pentaceratops, means five horned face. So right away, you'd think they'd have probably five horns up there on their heads. But you guys, they're actually just kind of like a triceratops when it comes to their horns. They've got the one above their parrot-like beak, up there above their nose. They have two horns up there above their eyebrows. And then they actually have those cheek horns over there on the sides of their head where their cheeks are. But we see that on many ceratopsians. So it's not a, a, like a rare thing that we see only on the pentaceratops where it has those cheek horns. And those cheek horns can often even be a little bit more rounded. So they're not going to be as sharp and as pointy as the beak horn and those eyebrow horns up there. So even though we call it the five horn face, the pentaceratops, it doesn't have like five gigantic horns up there above its eyebrows on its frill or anything like that. Now what really sets them apart is their large neck frill. Their frill is huge and it has two big fenestra in it. And a fenestra, those are the holes inside the skull that are going to make it more lightweight. They're going to make it be able to have the muscles and whatnot to be able to attach to the skull, all types of things. So they have two fenestra up there in that frill and it's going to make it uh, lightweight like I mentioned. And there's going to be a little thing of skin. So you won't see a hole through their head. There will be a layer of skin that goes over the top of the fenestra. And that leads scientists to believe that maybe that fenestra was more for display and not for combat. Because if they were used to use their frill for like fighting, there remember there's two big holes in there that are just covered up by their leathery skin, their pebble-like skin. So if somebody was to poke into their frill, it might go right through their frill, right where those fenestra are, those two holes up there in their skull, helping it keep lightweight, uh, be able to attach the muscles and whatnot. So it would go right through it, and that would hurt our pentaceratops a lot. So maybe those frills are just for a little bit of display. And same with the horns, you guys. Those little bony knobs, those triangular hornets that go around the frill up there might just be a little bit for display. Maybe they can tell each other apart between their friends and family members. Maybe even for a little bit of mating so that the species can continue to grow and have all kinds of little baby pentaceratops running around. Wouldn't they just be the cutest? Now, something also interesting about the frill, I've got my pentaceratops toy right here in my science lab, and it does have it intact. So you guys, up there at the top of the frill, it doesn't kind of curve like our triceratops. They have somewhat of this, uh, this U-shaped dip at the very top of the frill. So if you can imagine like maybe a big rectangle and that's its frill at the very top in the middle, it has this little dip out of it, kind of like a little U, a little U-shaped dip up there at the top of the frill. There's all those little triangular hornets, those little horns all around it, and the two at the very top, they actually point downward, you guys. They don't point out and maybe stick out as a, si a type of defense item. They actually point down towards the frill, into the frill. So you guys, their frill is just what sets the pentaceratops uh, away from all those other ceratopsians. It doesn't have those five horns like we think it should with its name, the pentaceratops, but its frill is definitely 
definitely its best characteristic. Now, this Ceratopsina is also going to have that toothless, parrot-like beak like we see on our other Ceratopsians. They're going to have a powerful jaw for grinding down all those plants, all the vegetation they're eating back during the Mesozoic era. And they have something called cheek teeth. So back up there in their cheeks, they have all kinds of teeth in there. And just like our Ceratopsian, you guys, they probably had somewhere over 800 teeth in their lifetime. Because our dinosaurs, when they would lose a tooth, it would simply just grow back. So that's why there was no dentist back during the Mesozoic era, because they would just grow back. They didn't need to go get a cavity pulled or have a tooth pulled, you guys. So no dentist for our dinosaurs, especially our Ceratopsians with over 800 teeth. Now the Pentaceratops has a very uh, tall and wide torso. They have somewhat of a rhinoceros-like body, and their front legs, you guys, somewhat their arms, their front legs, are more narrow than their back legs. And also something kind of cool, in their front, their front feet have five toes, and I know there's a couple claws on them as well, whereas the back feet have only four toes with those hooves. So why does the front feet have five toes and the back feet only have four toes? Isn't that just very odd in the toe difference on their feet? Now our Pentaceratops right here also has that stiff tail behind them that's helping them run very quickly, keeping balance as they're maybe running away from some meat-eating carnivores. And then they are a herding herbivore. They're going to be living in the herd, the protection of the herd, you guys. And maybe they even were in a matriarchal system. Wouldn't that be awesome to have a Pentaceratops, a female Pentaceratops, be the leader of the entire herd? And our Pentaceratops, you guys, is also a related somewhat to our Chasmosaurus. That's another type of Ceratopsian that they're very closely related to. Now, when did this dinosaur live and how long did the Pentaceratops live during that Mesozoic era, the middle life? Well, it's coming in the rock layers about 76 to 74 million years ago during that late Cretaceous period. It's found here in North America where I live, down in the Kirtland Formation in the San Juan Basin of New Mexico. I believe they also find a Pentaceratops over in Colorado, and I think they believe that they lived on the western side of North America, down from New Mexico all the way up into Canada. So our Pentaceratops living on the west side of that uh, western interior seaway that went straight down the middle of North America and covered Nebraska full of water. So if I was in Nebraska in the Cretaceous period, I better be like King Triton and a merman for sure. But our Pentaceratops found down there in New Mexico. It was found in 1921 by Charles Sternberg, and it was named in 1923 by Henry F. Osborne. So those are the paleontologists dug up and described and named our Pentaceratops, the five-horned face. Well, you guys, what is going to be our official fossil score for our Pentaceratops? Remember, at the end of the day, one fossil for some of those weakest dinosaurs, ten fossils for those strongest dinosaurs. And if you guys remember from episode number two, way a long, long time ago, we gave the Triceratops a seven point six. A 7.6. So where does our Pentaceratops fall within the Triceratops? Now remember, our Pentaceratops isn't as big as a Triceratops. Our Penta, around 23 feet in length. Triceratops is up to 30 feet in length. So this one is a smaller Ceratopsian, probably running around the same 15-20 miles per hour, but they have one of the biggest skulls. Our Pentaceratops, an 8-9 to nine foot skull. They have those three horns on them, just like a Triceratops, and then those two horns over there on their cheeks. They have that amazing large neck frill, one of the biggest of any of the Ceratopsians. All kinds of triangular hornets, those little knobs on it, and they have that U-shaped dip up there at the top with two horns pointing downward. They have a toothless beak, you guys, all those cheek teeth, somewhat of a rhino-like body, and they lived back during the late Cretaceous period. 
Dragon. So you guys, how are we going to rate it against the Triceratops? A 7.6 for our Triceratops. I wasn't sure. At one time, I was like lower. At one time, I was like higher. So at the end of the day, I decided to give our Pentaceratops. It's not as big. It has the bigger head frill, but I still thought it should be lower than our Triceratops, but, but not by much. So I decided to give our Pentaceratops a 7.5. 5! 7.5 for our Pentaceratops, the five-horned face. A 7.5 for this amazing Ceratopsian on the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast. Now that was one Camelot-like dinosaur review. Wasn't that just one of the greatest Ceratopsians? I've really started appreciating all those horned-faced dinosaurs over the last couple of years. The five-horned face would have made such a great dinosaur president. It would have ruled Pangaea like no one other and with an iron horn too. It's a Kennedy-like dinosaur for sure. Now, on a more serious note, everyone, today's podcast is in honor of the 35th president of the United States of America, John F. Kennedy, or JFK, as he was known. Now, sadly, this young president was killed in Dallas back in 1963, and that's why that the 63rd podcast episode of the Dinosaur Review for Kids podcast is being dedicated in his honor. Now, a fun fact about President Kennedy, while he was in the White House, he had two pet parakeets, and their names were Bluebell and Mabel. So JFK had dinosaurs in the White House. Is that cool or what? Now, you guys, let's do a quick joke before we log off for today. What do you call a dinosaur with a bad back? Oh, my back hurts, you guys. What do you call a dinosaur with a bad back? Do you guys know? It's a very bad Spinosaurus, a very bad Spinosaurus, because the Spino, the Spinosaurus is from its spines. It sailed back there, and it is very bad, a bad Spinosaurus, a bad back for our spined lizard. Now, during our next podcast episode, we're hopping on the Dinosaur Review for Kids tour bus, and finally heading towards Greenbow, Alabama. And has anybody ever heard of Greenbow? Do you know where Greenbow, Alabama is? Well, I know for a fact no one's actually been there because it's just a pretend town from the movie Forrest Gump. And it's one of my favorite movies in the entire world and the theme of our next podcast episode. Well, that's it, everyone. I need to go grab my beach bag because it's time to start my family spring break vacation. Today, it's almost up to 71 degrees. It's just so beautiful outside. But sadly, we don't have any beaches here in Omaha but I know we'll still find some fun and awesome stuff to do this week. And tonight is night number two of WrestleMania. My family and I can't wait to see who wins tonight, and I'll be cheering for Roman Reigns and the Bloodline. Now remember, my name is Dinosaur Ranger Anthony, your Kennedy-like host for today's podcast, and as always, keep digging for dinosaurs.